Um, you know, I my father, I grew up, you know, with my father being around quite a bit um, when I was born. Uh, when he joined McCoy's Tyner's Band in, in the late 70s to early 80s, he was out quite a bit. You know, McCoy was touring a lot. But, uh, you know, he was always... He's always been a family man, first and foremost. So um, even when he was on the road, he was always checking in to make sure that we're, you know, that my mom was holding up okay. Um, so, um, and he was always there for me. You know, like he, um, you know, uh, he was one of these like hands-on father. He wasn't like a dollar in dad. He was like always there for me. And um, you know, and you know, me and I should say me and my my two younger sisters. And um, you know, when he saw that I was getting interested in music, uh, he wasn't like one of these guys that's like, man, you gotta, you gotta play like this, and you gotta, you know, he wasn't really like, okay, you gotta practice eight hours a day, and, you know, breaks, and, you know, he was just like, look, if you're interested in this, if you're serious in this, about this, <coughs> excuse me, there's a, <coughs> there are a few things that you need to check out, so, you know, he, he introduced me to certain records to check out, uh, uh, certain recordings, and, and certain music, you know, he, you know, we would, would go through the real book and checking out talk songs, you know, he make me learn it on the piano and make me transcribe, you know, I was transcribing very early on. So when I got to school, it was, you know, when I got to college, it was, it was easier for me because I had been doing it for so long, but he knew the importance that if, you know, you were really serious about this music, you know, you have to study you know, and that's why now, you know, I'm, you know, even as 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 a teacher now, I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm not hard on my students, but I make sure they know the the importance of all these different things to to, you know, from transcribing to, to uh, you know, to listening, you know, and so, um, and, you know, so he instilled really good values in me about you know about the seriousness of of, of playing this music and and not taking it for granted. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people might not know him, but he, you know, he, I, you know, he was one of the premier violinists of you know of modern jazz music. You know, playing with uh, first with Grover Washington Jr. from 19. Well, he he was he was actually contracted by Grover to hire a string section. Grover had a record out, I think, with the orchestra, so he was hired to conduct and and uh, do arrangements that Grover. Uh, wanted and you know he ha he was hired to contract the, the strings, and then um, I guess you know I, I forget where it was, but you know I guess Grover heard him play a little bit and he was like, man, you know, would you want to become like a full time member of my band? And and so he he joined Grover's band in '76 and stayed with him throughout uh, for about three years to '79. And they recorded three albums together. They did one was called Live at the Bijou. Uh, second one was called Reed Seed for Motown Records. And then uh, the third one was called Paradise, which actually the 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 title cut was uh, a song that was written from my from uh, by the pen of my dad. So um, and that was the great the great thing about Grover is he he gave all the musicians in that group you know their full credit, full writing credit. So and he encouraged them to write for the band. So my dad was, you know, composing a lot of music during that time for 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 Grover's group, and then um, in '79 he joined up with McCoy. Um, he got the gig through Charles Fambro, and uh, I think McCoy was looking for a violinist, and he was he's you know I think he was thinking about calling some other violinists, and then Charles said, "Look, man, there's this guy that you should really check out, John Blake." And I think, you know, I think the selling point was the fact that he was from Philadelphia. <laughs> and then, you know, McCoy being from Philadelphia, he's like, oh, okay, he's a homeboy. Let me check him out. So um, McCoy got, you know, McCoy heard him, and I think he called him for a couple gigs. And then um, when, Grover's bro when Grover's group split up, he, uh, he called McCoy. He said, look, McCoy, um, you know, I'm going to have some more free time now. It looks like Grover has disbanded the group. And he said, McCoy told him, he's like, look, man, you can stay in my band as long as you want. So, and their first real tour together was going to Japan for about, you know, three weeks. And, uh, and they came back and recorded the first record called Horizon. And then he uh, recorded another record later on with a with a slightly different group. Um, uh, the first group, Horizon, that had, that was like a, I think it was a septet 
So you know it's going back if you could keep a septet out uh, in Europe or in Asia. So he, he uh, that band consisted of uh, Charles Fambro on bass, uh, Guillermo Franco playing percussion, Al Foster playing drums, and the front line was George Adams on tenor saxophone, George, Joe Ford on alto and soprano saxophone, my father, and of course McCoy. Um, and so my dad stayed with McCoy for about five years, and. Um, and and in and, and that band also he was he was composing music for for the group and uh, and also McCoy encouraged him to to write for the band. Uh, the second installment of of McCoy's band that my father was a part of was uh, a quintet project which featured um, Gary Bartz and my dad uh, John Lee on electric bass and a great drummer by the name of Wilby Fletcher. And that band stayed together for a couple years and they toured all around Europe and, and Asia. So, um, yeah, you know, he, and then, you know, he was also writing for, he, my father also had his own groups, and then when it came time for him to record, um, he had, um, he had, con he had composed a lot of music, so, uh, so the label that he first recorded for was Grammy Vision, and McCoy was a guest on his first record for, for that label, and, and so, uh, yeah, he, you know, he, like I said, he was a, he's been a big influence. He still is, even, you know, even though he's not with us physically, he's still been a big influence on me, you know, about how I, you know, just think about him, you know, thinking about how he led his bands and, and, um, and just, you know, now for me as a parent, you know, I have two younger kids who are 10 and 8, you know, yeah, I, you know, I kind of recall certain things that he would do when I see myself doing it, you know. You know, for my kids too, and so uh, you know, it's, it's great to have somebody like that. You know, who who understands the ins and outs of the music, and you know, the ups and downs. You know, because there were times where you know he was working a lot and you know, making really good money, and then there was other times where it was slow. So, you know, so uh, you know, he he you know he told me early on, you know, the, about you know being a, being able to wear different hats, so to speak. So, you know, being able to write. You know, because you can get called to compose music for somebody, or somebody might want you to arrange. So, you know, I learned how to write for big band, learned how to write for orchestra. Um, you know, producing. You know, you know, he's gotten called. He would get calls to do, you know, produce somebody's record, and you know, so he's, you know, you have to be. You know, he told me he's like, you have to be able to wear these different hats. You're not just going to be able to, to make a living. Playing. You know, we all would like that, but you know. There's other aspects that you have to be able to, you know, have under your belt. So I keep that in mind, you know, and, you know, I love to tour and play, but, you know, you know, when there's some off times I'm writing or I'm teaching, you know, my father was big in education. He taught, um, you know, when he was first, before he was touring, he, when he first got out of college, he was, uh, he was actually, they had a program set where, where he would start a band. He, he had, a, he would go to the prisons and, you know, outside of Philadelphia and, he had a prison band, basically, and he would, you know, teach these, the inmates, you know, they had, mu they supplied musical instruments, and he would teach them music, so uh, he had, he said he had a great band, you know, in the, in the prison, so, so yeah, I mean, teaching was a big aspect for him, you know, he was big in the education field, and also my mom being a teacher in the public school systems in Philadelphia, they were, they were really big on education, you know, and so they, they made sure that my sisters and I got you know, the best education that they could. Uh, my name is Jonathan Blake. Uh, 